All right, what up everyone? We're back for video two on how to create a pre-authorization Stripe instance in a Dallo that will not require your app to be PCI compliant because we work around the whole issue. So let's, let's pick it back up. At the end of the last one, we've done this here custom action on our first page to create the checkout instance. By the way, this here is just a loading animation because it does take a few seconds and it's uh, nice to let the user know that the app hasn't jammed. All right, so after we create the instance using make.com and using um, this custom action and we direct the user based on the result, we end up on the actual pre-auth screen. And so what we have here is a web view and really straightforward, what it's going to do is it's going to show URL and it's taking the URL that was returned from the last um, section. And uh, the way it's getting that again is it's coming through this make flow and uh, we're just plugging it in. So when we ask for the, it's called the setup intent, right? The, the intent or the pre-auth screen so that we can take the credit card info and charge it later, we're gonna get a URL. That URL is gonna be somewhat short-lived and we present that to the client and we send them to that screen. So they can then put in their information and Stripe will grab it and it never actually sits in a Dallas database. So that's really useful. Now, um, if we take a look at what's actually happening here, we're doing some conditional actions, right? Um, so in the last, let's just take a look back here. In the last um, section, what we were doing is when we requested the intent, we also specified where we're gonna redirect. And actually this is the webhook address for over here. So when a user is done their checkout, they are going to basically get redirected to a screen that actually goes to this URL. Now, what's happening here is the second they get to that screen, we're gonna redirect them. So they never really see it, right? Here is, um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update the current call and we're gonna say, that, huh, what do we do here? Huh, are we not changing anything? That's funny. We might be able to remove this. Yeah, okay, so I guess I'll prune that after. So ignoring that guy. Um, so what we're doing is we are linking based on the result, which makes more sense. I was wondering what we were updating there. Uh, so we're going to, based on if this link URL contains success. So the way we're doing that is um, link URL comes from web view component URL. So every time the screen changes, this component will detect the URL and then it'll check the URL against this condition. So if at any point the link URL contains success, we're going to link to the call now or schedule. Okay, so that's the next page and uh, I just use it as a routing page. When you land on it, it sends you one way or another based on if you've scheduled a call or if you wanna just do a call live right now. The other option, Let's uh, just take a look back in here, is um, pre-auth error, right? So if there was an error, if the link contains fail. So once again, that is specified in our setup. We are sending them either to a link where one of the parameters, oh yeah, wrong one. Uh, so we are sending them to link where one of the parameters contains success or otherwise contains fail. Now, I think most of you looking at this probably recognize this format. This is a parameter, right? Uh, or a query. Uh, and I think they call them parameters too, basically. When you're setting up your custom action, this is the same thing. And if we wanted to add another one, we'd add an ampersand and then uh, second equals uh, value. And we could do that. I just won't because we don't need it here. All right, so that is um, how we actually take the payment. Now, what I wanna do is loop back on something important and I apologize for the like kind of splitting this idea across two videos. Over here, I am actually specifying. So what we're doing is we're getting the information, right? We're, we're getting the, creating the client, we're getting the intent. We could, by the way, try to look for the client first, which would be a nice addition. Um, so we don't create a new one each time, but it's not a big deal. Um, and so based on this, we're actually updating the Dallow record. Now at the top, you'll notice that I have the Adalo call record ID. And that means that I know which record I'm updating. Now, if I pause for a second, for most that's really hard to do in Adalo because for some reason they've obscured the crap out of their record IDs. 
And so it's really, really hard. And the, the horrific thing that we usually have to do is get all of the records, then filter for the one that matches the email of the user or find some like create our own ID and match for it. And, and that whole thing sucks, not only because the performance is terrible, not only because asking for all the records in a collection is just a ridiculous thing to do, uh, not just, yeah, so it, it's whatever. I could spend 20 minutes just saying how bad it is. So we, we never want to do that. And so one day when I was faced with that, I was talking to Steve, I said, Steve, can you please just make me a component that gets the record ID? And so we've had that for a while and it's pretty nifty, the Adalo record ID button. And so how does that work? Now, the thing is Steve made this in a way that actually works really well, but it also is very constraining. And the way I mean that is like, you really have to think, how do I get this thing into my workflow, right? Uh, the options are limited, so I have like you can't even really change the font size yet. Um, I had to put this rectangle behind it and whatever, but but the reality is it's still pretty great. So um, here's what I do: I filter based on the criteria of the record I'm trying to find, like any list. So I want one of the logged in users' calls, right? Because I'm getting the current user's call, the one that they're I'm basically loading current call, and so. And I, I don't think I can get this from a parent list, but maybe that would be a way to do it. Either way, um, what we have here is pre-auth required is true. So that's my criteria. Um, you don't necessarily have to know why this is what gets me to the current call, but it does. So when I have that current call and I click the button, uh, I can, you know, it's a button like any other. So I can do whatever I want when I click it. So one of the things is I link to the next page and the other is I update the current call and the update that I make is I've created a field called a Dallow record ID. And so basically just to explain the flow a little bit at large, when you land on this page, it creates a new call for you, assuming that you, assuming basically that you don't already have a call object that's active. Um, and I gauge that using the field that I just mentioned a second ago, which is the, uh, the pre-auth required. Cause if you've already pre-authorized it, then, uh, then we either have to start the flow again, or you already used it for a call. Again, that may not make sense. So um, just bearing with me here, the important thing is that when we have the condition where I know it's a new call and I need to add a number to it so that I can identify it in the future, by setting this button to filter for it and clicking on the button, I can go and update the Adala record ID. I think I said this in way too many words, so thanks for bearing with me. I hope you're watching this on double speed. <laughs> How do we do this? So we, uh, you know, plug in magic text like anything else. We use button with record ID. We choose record ID and that's it. So now when I get to make.com, I actually know my record ID and that makes my life so much easier. I'm going to pause here and then what we'll do is come back to We'll come back to part three, where I'm going to show you how we retrieve the intent. And hopefully I know what I'm talking about, because actually Phil made this. So um, maybe we'll pull him up if I can't walk through it. Uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, etc. Stay tuned for part three.